games, people often say, pro gamers often say, are won and lost in the draft. And I feel like that game was almost lost in the draft for Tass, in my opinion. I definitely felt like uh, DSA was ahead in that draft, so can't completely disagree. But look at that, ETC first ban. Yeah, that's... I mean, they are first pick here, so they will be able to grab whatever they want with a ban like ETC. And so they do they first pick Mura? They have to, right? Because if they don't, then they've screwed themselves. I, I was thinking it was either going to be Thrall or maybe even some crazier like an Abathur pick here. But here as DSA, don't you grab Muradin and then something? And, and then their tanks are... It's like, okay, yeah, use that Diablo again. I want you to. So they're going to grab Muradin and Abathur. Not going to take Falstad, uh it, just because they want to use Abathur this time, I guess. Uh, okay. Falstad and Abathur both equally popular global heroes on this map. Yeah, uh, I think that a team as strong as DSA, Abathur is going to be a pretty cool pickup for them. Especially when you have uh, three roles designated to flex. You may be playable by multiple members of your team. That's true. So, Lee Ming gets taken here for Tass now, and they do have some really nice initiate with Thrall here. I mean, it's not a bad draft for them. Lee Ming going up really high. I wonder what they're going to pair with this, though. Because there's no real great third pick that lines up with this. Lost Vikings! Oh, I love it. I'm so happy about this This is pick. what I this do, man. I mean, the exact league. type of thing I wanted to see here. I mean, Lost Vikings is still a very good hero, but we don't get to see a lot of, like, fantastic Vikings players out there, I guess? Yeah, uh, Black played Vikings in China a few weeks ago, and I can't remember if Vikings were ever even played in Super League ever. I can't think of a single game. I believe that they were, Maybe. didn't we? we? Yeah, we saw TNL use them with a Sylvanas comp on Garden of Terror Oh, once. yeah, that one time. That was a yeah, long time ago, was, but yeah. I had to really stretch my brain to get that one. Um, but yeah, this is really cool to see. Wow, the Diablo ban. And that was a that was a funny game in China, too. I watched that one as well with the, the Vikings. That was like countering the, the Abathur Zagara stuff is what that was. It was pretty cool. I thought it was a, a very situational play, but a very cool one. Tough ban here for TS. I think banning Zeratul is pretty smart, to be honest. What do you think about this Diablo ban? I think it's just kind of like, you like maybe they've really studied Lion a lot, and they're like, well, he plays Diablo all the time. He feels really comfortable. He picked him last game. It didn't. It was not a game changer, but I think it's a, a say, way of saying, well, now their comp is less comfortable. Yeah, it's certainly less comfortable, but it forces them into, I guess, like a, a tank that maybe they're going to they should be taking or something, if that makes sense. Not that Diablo is like terrible, but I I really like the Zeratul ban. Yeah. Because he's the Viking hunter. He's my worst enemy. Viking one of my most played heroes in a uh, hero league, and he's the bane of my existence. Oh yeah. Your I, multitasking has, is taxed enough already as it is. You got Zeratul running around. You can't even see him on the mini map. It's tough to keep those Vikings alive. You know, if they didn't have Abathur already, I would say let's see the the Nova. But of course, that can't happen, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, okay. I'm very happy to say we finally have the Haka being picked up. Absolutely one of my favorite heroes right now. Now, the reason why the Haka is so great here, uh, in my opinion, is he's also a great Viking hunter because the Vikings That's lurk true. in the bushes. He's going to go find them, he's going to grab them, and he's going to secure that kill because mm -hmm. versus even like Eric, you can kill, he could DPS Eric down with his Dark Swarm while the grab is ongoing yeah. sometimes because he just has such a large, uh, you know, small health pool. Yeah, and don't forget, there's like a bajillion bushes on this map. Uh, this is, it's just really cool. They have two global heroes right now, and they have a very, very strong front line with Greymane to finish everyone off. I'm, I like it so far. It's really cool. Now, Uther picked up. You think this is a denial Uther, or did they really want Uther? Because Uther doesn't necessarily pair well with Vikings. A lot of times you want to have like a Rhaegar or a Karazim to make sure that you can get an appeal off for everyone. You can but like keep the uh, longboat raid alive. Um, Stitch is coming out. This is interesting. I wonder if we're going to see Executioner coming out for the Vikings. This is my personal oh. favorite build. And, uh, they can do a lot of damage to slow targets and stun targets as well. Olaf will slow. Rhaegar coming out, not a big surprise here. Uh, I think the most reasonable pick, he's going to be able to keep the Haka alive all the time, as well as Greymane when he's up on the front lines. This is this was a really cool draft, man. This was really cool. I'm in love with DSA's comp, uh, but I actually like Tass's draft as well. I think that having the Vikings here and then having Stitches is kind of the like late game, you know, like, oh, we got a hook off and we killed someone. This is so sick, you know? Like, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it, I think it was a cool draft. Obviously, I like DSAs a little bit more, but 
I'm excited to see what Task can do with the Vikings. Yeah, it's, it's all about Gamong. He's going to be on the Vikings here. Mm -hmm. And if he plays a good Viking, I mean, this kind of draft, you can't really say one way or the other, in my opinion. Like, for me, I can't choose one way or the other because it's all based on the control of the Vikings. That's The entire game will basically be decided by if he plays them well or if he plays them poorly or how well DSA plays against them. Like, yeah. they're the hero to watch right now. But, guys, we are ready to jump into game number two. Cursed Hollow is the map. Let's jump into it. Alright, DSA Tist on Murad and Reset is playing Dahaka, so a very different role from Thrall in the past. Kinu on Rhaegar, BDG is on Greymane, and Nacho Jin is playing Abathur. Yeah, uh, I like that they put Reset on that. I do think he's more of a bruiser than an actual tank. But anyways, over here in the red, on the right, we have Gamang on those Vikings that you were saying. Haybin on Thrall, Lion on Stitches, Onyxian on Uther, and Sungwoo on Li Ming. So Onyxian playing Uther back to back here. Mm -hmm. uh, and did do some great divine shielding. Sure, yeah. And he is going to be very good. He's going to have good pairing with Thrall in particular. And here. you know what? He's just a good hero to have against this comp because of cleanse plus divine shield. Like, what you're going to be looking out for is Dahaka grabbing someone, dragging him in, and then, you know, the, the stuns, the slows, and, and Greymane blowing him up. But a divine shield is actually going to ruin a lot of that. Something else I want to point out here is we have a very old school talent coming out, uh, Astral Presence coming out for Leeming, so it's going to give her oh. a lot more ability to stay in tribute lines much, much longer. Yeah, actually, I like that as well. That's really cool. And Gamong actually taking a lot of damage, but does get out of there. Very nice job. So, some things to point out and look out for in this game for Vikings control is how often we see him lane swap, because mm -hmm. the normal way of doing things is you have uh, Olaf solo tank the top. Baylog is in the middle. He has a lot of wave clear. He's the strongest wave clear of the Viking. Looks like he's going to get assassinated, meanwhile. Yep. <laughs> um, that's what I'm talking about, the, the hunting power there of Dahaka. Then Eric's going to be in the bot lane, and he rotates around. But sometimes you need to rotate Olaf out like this because mm -hmm. you've got a four-man on the top. You don't want to keep him there. So I, I'm really going to be keeping a close eye on Gamang's like, rotation and his multitasking because in this case, obviously, well, Gamang probably should have been down there even a little bit faster because he was losing Soak in the mm. mid lane. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be losing that. They do have Abathur, so they have a lot of Soak as well. It could be an issue if they do end up losing any. And Oh, look at that Lion going down. A nice finish off here by BDG. Oh, man. All that extra damage going down in Sungwoo as well. And, you know, Olaf still taking that Soak. Balog actually goes up to the top, so some smart rotations so far. Looks like they wanted to see some Chen. It's not gonna <laughs> I want to see Chen, man. That's <laughs> definitely one of the most fun guys. But you know what? We got Dahaka. We have everything I could have asked for today. Dahaka and Vikings in the same game. It's like Christmas. Yes. <laughs> Timing here to take this uh, giant camp is really nice. They got a yeah. second and small. Okay, uh, Greyman and Rhaegar, uh, BDG and Kinu over on the other side doing it as well at the exact same second. A great duo to take a camp with as well. And I got to say, definitely this game, I'm liking what Tass is doing more than previously, but they are behind on experience right off the bat with Vikings in the game. So whenever I see that, I'm a little bit nervous. I feel like the team with Vikings, if they don't get 10 first, you feel like you're not. What are you doing? Something has gone wrong, you know, like yeah. you, you've missed the purpose. Yeah. Um, they're going to actually upgrade Eric as well, level 4. So they're doing a pretty wonky build mm. um, as uh, we do see Gamang taking a bit of damage there with Balog. The fight does ensue. Better positioning here for DSA. And they have yeah. all these mines as well. You know, that that's really too bad because this is one of the points where you kind of want to get ahead is during the tribute fights. Yeah, because that's when your Vikings are extra so Yeah. And Eric just got assassinated again by Dahaka, meanwhile in the bot lane. Yeah, Dahaka is absolutely wrecking these these Vikings so, so hard. Gamong has to be more careful about this. But it's tough if he just walks out of a bush that you're not expecting. You can't necessarily see him coming. The thing is, too, if you're actually very careful, you can even use the tab screen to know that if you don't have vision of a Viking that it is in that lane. And then you just know where you can predict pretty reasonably which bush he's in. If you don't have vision and they're still getting EXP in the bot lane, Eric's down there in the bush. Mm. And Tess going to take a lot of damage here. We'll get locked down. But he just sends Dahaka down to the bush, gets the kill, mm. and it can come back to the fight. No, certainly. And there he is, in fact. BDG, wow, a beautiful dive away there and does end up living. Some great Greyman coming out of BDG today. 
Lion is certainly going to die. He's not getting out of oh, here. Oh, that's not my home gate. <laughs> <laughs> Went the wrong way there, perhaps. Um, as this time we do see the, the reverberation coming out from Murden, the double there. So mm -hmm. a bit more of a normal build. Bribe stacks here as well. We didn't really talk about that too much for Gamong. So he can steal some camps and be annoying with that. But he's going to need to keep his Vikings alive before that's going to yeah. be useful. Well, he's, he's kind of playing with fire here. BDG definitely can kill Eric very, very quickly. Uh, Gamong will be able to run out of there, though. And they pick up their second tribute and still are ahead in experience with Dahaka getting yet another kill. Yeah, uh, four kills in this game in total, I think. One of those is from four Viking kills. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you just can't have this happen because Vikings are worth a decent amount of EXP. And this is a great way to use Eric in the bot lane because he's going to be able to scout the boss. And he will see it. But what can he do about it? His team is not going to be rotated away. He's basically just trying to scare them, but they're not going for the bait. Yeah, he, he doesn't have the same type of swagger as a murd in walking towards you, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, we do actually have Tass trying to take theirs. Uh, I don't think they're actually going to rotate up to stop this. Looks like Arrest, see, now he's trying to make them stop. And, and in it's fact, working. it works. And every second that they buy, even in this, allows the boss to further push stronger yeah. in the bot lane. So Dude, stronger rotations here from DSA. This is really, really painful right now for Tass. This is super tough. Uh, it is, of course, curse point for DSA, who they're not level 10 yet, but they're going to be there before Tass almost no matter what happens. So that makes it tough once again. Cleanses up, and that's all they've got. Oh, boy. Here comes the stuns down on the Haven. He's going to get killed first. The wall even goes down. So Sungu's like, oh, God. <laughs> uh, I think this should easily be a curse. Two to zone. Kinu's going to collect. And there's the first curse here at 545. And, again, as you said, if the Vikings don't get you 10 first, your composition isn't working out. Oh, my God. Is yeah. he going to die here again? I think he is. He's not paying attention. Oh, man, Gamong. In the meantime, we actually had Dahaka up top, I think, going after one as well. So maybe that's what happened where you didn't see it. But this is – you can't have it happen like that. Okay, he gets away with this one, but still. Still. Yeah. If he had died there, it would have been inexcusable. He did get some value, I suppose. He kept Murden off the fort. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I guess so. We're which, really just trying which to is find... now dead. <laughs> yeah, we're just trying to find positives here. But uh, the Viking composition, like I said, is, is only... it's Your entire composition, your entire game is revolved around it. And it's only as good as your Vikings player. Mm. If your Vikings player isn't doing what he needs to do, then you're not going to win the game most of the time. No, certainly not. And Arrest has been just a total badass here on Dahaka. He is everywhere he needs to be. He's using those cooldowns on his burrow so effectively. Uh, I just, I can't imagine what like let's look at let's let's like try to play devil's advocate here before, mm -hmm. if I can even explain this before they lose the game. Uh, like, what do they have to engage on? They don't have 10 yet. They can't go Gorge here, I don't think. That's just not going to work out. They're going to have to take Disintegrate for sure for the damage. Play again coming out here for the Vikings. Like, we'll give them more uh, presence in the fight. They don't take Disintegrate. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> I guess we'll see how that goes for them. But at least they do have Sunder. That's super important. Yeah, I mean... They, they definitely needed that. I mean, even if they go execute on the Vikings, <laughs> the Earthquake's not going to be worth it. No, certainly not. <laughs> uh, I don't think the Vikings are going to be alive long enough to really do too, too much. I mean, you got play again, but what is that going to accomplish for them uh, in yeah. these fights? Like, I mean, it's going to give them more staying power. He's going to do more damage. He can teleport them around the map, but... Yeah, I, I've definitely seen more play it again lately than we used to see, uh, you know, back in the day, but... We'll see what that does for him. We do have another one dying off. I guess with how much he's dying, play it again could be very nice. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Stitch is going down as well. DSA. You know, and here's the thing, too, right? It's level 12 versus level 11. It's almost 13. There it is. Sometimes we see games that look like this that are close, but this Burden, one really isn't there. Burden hasn't even taken his heroic yet. He's trying to decide. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Eric. Oh. Oh! Gets out of there. Missed his tongue. Oh, well. Uh... <laughs> It's very, very slow, but it's very short as well. That's funny that he's actually kind of saving that. I guess you don't need it till you're going to use it. And it's it's not like Murden's going to die quickly. Like, if you want your avatar, you will have time to click on it and then use it. <laughs> this is like the moment where Tist is MVP in an interview. And the Gary's like, why didn't you choose your talents? He's like, oh, I just I just knew we were that much better. Like, yeah. <laughs> It's like, it, it, did you see, like, a while back, there was a, a game in Europe, and one of the teams had a Lili and took no talents Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Caldor was telling me about this, actually. Yeah, it was 
I forgot what it's hard to be more bad manner than that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this, I can't. I can't remember who it was. It was a long time ago. It was a while back. Now it was back when Lily was kind of in the meta. <laughs> no longer the case. But uh, again, I'm, I'm trying to find devil, devil's advocate things here for TAS. Um, I feel like if they had a really cool engage with disintegrate and longboat raid, they could actually do some damage and maybe get a pick. But it's not going to happen with what they've built so far. Well, we will see here. A full silence going down onto Uther, so he's definitely having a very tough time. Uh oh, it, we do have to have divine shield going down onto stitches here as well. But the body blocks go on for days. And now he will go, and it looks like Nacho is going to go in here with a clone. Arrest even drags out uh, Onyxian, and he does get blown up as well. And, I mean, Now, I, I, I do, I have something positive to say, okay. is that Oh my god, he's, he's going to die into the stone! Oh, he's jumped! Oh my god, if he had died there, I, I was going to have to take it back. But, uh, <laughs> before I even said it. No, but, uh, to be fair, like, um, it doesn't, like, they seem, like, not terrible. DSA is really playing very well. Yeah, That's yeah. what I'm trying to say, I guess. They're uh, getting outplayed. It's not like Tass is, it's not like Redemption I felt like last season where I was just like, oh, no, 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 no. These guys are not supposed to, you know, these are guys are not one of the top eight teams. Right. I'm not saying that about Tass. They beat Hero. You, you can, there's some good things going on, but DSA just is, like, seems like a different league. Well, as you can see here, Reset's going to come in. Sungwoo has to go ahead and teleport away. A defensive Sunring used as well as mm. that file, but... The fact that Sungwoo got out of there is pretty amazing indeed, but, ah, uh, man, immediately Haven gets blown up. Um, jump forward here. Tist is coming up into the front lines, and actually, a Ancestral has to be used, but there's the Burrow to make sure that Reset gets out. The boss is pushing with this, and... There's Mercs in the top lane as well, don't forget, pushing that as well. And this is going to be a full wall, and if they just keep babysitting this golem, I think it will be a keep as well. Yeah, are they going to actually remain here? They're all getting quite oom indeed. Yeah. So it looks like they are going to back off for the time being. By the way, I think I've called him a rest a few times because his DSA reset. Yeah. Like, oh, my God, my well, brain is going haywire. Before we even started this uh, cast, I was like, well, I know this is going to happen. Yeah. Because they go capital A at the end and lowercase afterwards. <laughs> so it looks like every player's name just starts with an A. Mm. Like a reset, a tist, a yeah. BDG, <laughs> a Kino. But um, we'll get used to it, of course. Mm -hmm. Snake was the better team name. Yeah, Snake was a pretty decent team name. It was very easy to remember. It has like a just abbreviated characters are not generally good team names. Like the team has to become good before it's good. Yeah. Like EG, what a terrible team name that was until <laughs> they were good, right? But then it's like, oh yeah, it's EG. I mean, that's just who they are. But like Snake gives it, you know, it's like, ooh, they're venomous. Mm. Yeah, I, I think the fame thing that you're saying is definitely true. Snake was also a Chinese sponsor that they no yeah, longer lost. Course. That's the reason why it was their name. All right, well, this is kind of greedy. Um, but even still, Tass is, like, not confident to dis to actually invade and stop this. This is – it's really funny because there's, like, not even everyone here. But, okay, we actually have Nacho Jin going with that clone right now. A BDG going in, seeing if he can get a kill. And, of course, with that silence coming out, just an awesome isolation there. Look at this. No damage. There's no impact for these Vikings right now. They don't have 16s. So they don't have Executioner. And they don't have uh, Longboat Raid. So – they just sat there and died. They're lucky Leeming's not on the other side of the team. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is... Well, I don't know that it could go much worse anyways, but yeah, uh, definitely very, very brutal. And without a doubt, Reset is like an MVP this game. He's gotten so many kills. His isolations have hit every time. I need to learn how to do that. Okay, Nacho oh, Gen's going to deny here. He's going to bait. Hilarious. Reset comes down. And uh, <laughs> Nacho Gen taps. Oh, he misses that tongue there, but uh, definitely he has been just a fantastic <laughs> player here. Reset's like, all right, I'll deal with him. You channel. He's like, all right. <laughs> He's actually going to get the kill. He runs into the mine. All he needs to do is grab that tongue. Come on, reset. You got this right. Nah, well, the cooldown has to reset first, but uh, <laughs> we do have Divine Shield going down onto Lion. Of course, they do have the curse now as well as the golem and... Tist is up here on the front line. Yeah. Sword everybody down. Olaf is dead. It's a pretty good hook right there. Not going to be enough to change the tides, though. No. Anixian is going to be the first to fall here in this second battle. And 
that will be core and that will be game as DSA yeah. is going to take a 2-0 lead. And I think during this break, TAS needs to really rethink how they want to approach this series because this strategy certainly did not work out. No, no, it really did not. Uh, I like the ideas within it, but the global presence here of Dahaka was way, way too much. Like, I mean, the the Abathur helped out as well. Not